Well, hi to everybody. Yeah, I'm the owner of the Iconic Cafe. I'm safe. Um, I'm alive. <laughs> uh, we are in an undisclosed area uh, and a safe place. Uh, we had to escape after three and a after three and a half hour uh, after the ordeal uh, because they were waiting for us outside uh, a block away. And uh, it just happened to happen again. God is always in charge. That there was uh, at the War Memorial Museum was there a kind of a, a protest, and at the uh, uh, war, uh, you know where the habit habitat is is called. I don't know what it's called. You know where they have the the soldiers under that arc. Yeah. There was a little protest. There were some veterans there praying and whatever. So. The thugs, I call them thugs, the uh, rent a cop. Uh, they had to go there, so they opened up a window for me to and my family and some of the customers to get out and not be arrested. And so we took off very fast and uh, we, we arrived where we wanted to be safe. And uh, yeah, so we are now here. We're, we're holding out because we don't trust the situation. Uh, to be safe, it doesn't matter if they say the, the emergency act is uh, term terminated because they're still blocking off the streets. The police is still down there, the rent a cop, and um, yeah, uh, I've been advised to stay low uh, because they want to probably make uh, a example through me if they take me because they were really, really, really embarrassed what happened in, uh, in Ottawa that Sunday. They, they went overboard and they're being exposed, not just in the cafe, but whatever they did even on Saturday with the horses and all that, it was, it was unnecessary. So, uh, can I say your name? Yeah. Travis asked me if he could do an interview and here I am. And he asked me if I can tell my story and uh, yes, I can tell my story. <laughs> I hope I don't go too far and too long. So if if I go or get carried away, Travis will stop me. Yeah, That's good. Hour is okay, so that doesn't matter. So to make uh, this uh, understand all the audience or whoever is listening, um, I was born originally in Switzerland. I died three times already. And uh, I survived, I came back. I don't know what that happened or, you know, you can, <laughs> it's hard to explain for those who never happened to them, but I drowned, I lost all my blood and I'm still alive. I, I don't know, even the doctor said what's going on here. I got a car accident, a very bad one. I came out unheard, but I know I was gone for a while. <laughs> I don't know how that stuff happened. And, uh, and in 2000, so, uh, no, it was 1987. I I I I was uh, I was on the brink of uh, dying because uh, my body went septic, and the doctor didn't believe that I would make through the night. But I had an encounter with Jesus, and from that point on, uh, I understood my purpose in life. Well, I got married in the meantime, and I raised my children in Cinco County. Uh, Midland, La Fontaine, and Penetanguishing area. Um, and the Lord told me, rest, because I was doing some work. I was doing some missionary work. I was doing, uh, I was serving people. I was preaching. I mean, I was doing a lot of, of everything he, he told me to do. Um, and uh, when my kids uh, came to the right age, my daughter got married <laughs> or was just about to get married. Um, my son went to university, the baby one, and the other one is autistic and he's with me and doesn't have to be on a, uh, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't have a job and all that. So anyways, we were retiring, my wife and I slowly, and uh, the Lord say, okay, it's time to get up. And unfortunately, <laughs> in a way, um, I had to sell the house that I loved and I sold it. Uh, even though it was impossible to sell it before, if I, even if I wanted, because it just didn't happen. <laughs> and uh, when I when I put the house for sale, it sold two days before the listing. Um, 
And this restaurant come always, came up always for sale on my computer. And I don't know how that worked, but it always popped up, popped up. And so I went down to see it. And I knew the moment I entered that restaurant, the cafe, that I need to be the purchaser. And there was a little bit of issue with the financing, but you had to sell the house, buy a cafe, buy another house in the same time. And financially, it was impossible. That's what they told me. But somehow God guided me to a guy and the guy said, I can do that. No problem. And he did it. So within, uh, within a month, I was the owner of the Iconic Cafe. Not that I wanted the Iconic Cafe. I was just obeying God. Um, because I, I, I was, like I said before, I was going to retire. I didn't care about having more problem. And I was kind of uh, speechless. My wife, too, said, why we buy a cafe? I, I, what is the reason? And then we had to buy a house where to live. And it was comfortable to travel, but in an in a area where we didn't like to be. And, uh, and uh, I mean, we were wondering. Why is it, what is the purpose? I can actually oversee the, the parliament from my kitchen window. And the Lord says, pray for that parliament. And so I prayed a lot. <laughs> and uh, nine months later, COVID came in. At first, we were like, what is going on here? And then my wife, being a nurse, she told me that COVID stands for coronavirus. And uh, a cold stands, for, the name of a cold or a virus is called coronavirus, coronavirus. And that's a cold. It's not a flu. It's not a... And uh, I was scratching my head. This is, this is weird. Uh, God made me pay, buy a cafe. And nine months later, chaos starts. And we, it was supposed to be for three weeks, but it went on for three, four, five, two and a half years, right? But this Teresa Tan, this lady... The doctor, they call it. I don't know, but she used to inspect the kitchen where I was working in Cinco County. So I don't think she's a, she's a doctor. And how can be a, a general practitioner or a, what do you call it, those doctors that take care of children? Pediatrician. Pediatrician be in the pathology field. Doesn't make no sense. So when you take that, you might do biology and then you go to be a general practitioner or, or, or you know, and if you want to go into pathology, virology, you go to another place. So how can she jump from here to there? So I think the government is lying. And we know they're lying. And um, when we were in Cinco County, we had a doctor. His name was Kassan. And uh, he, in, um, he had to leave. So we received another doctor. And I asked this new doctor, where did Dr. Kassan went? He says he went with uh, West Nile virus with the team into Toronto. And then when I asked the, the health inspector, the boss of Teresa Tan, where did she go? I says, oh, she went to Toronto with the SARS team. I went, what the heck? Why do I have to know these people? But now I know why, right? A little bit too much coincidence. Nevertheless, now I'm, I bought this cafe. Uh, hopefully I don't confuse you much. Uh, I, I, I'm in the epicenter in the eye of the storm. Uh, that's too much coincidence. When the when the convoy came, you mean, or when COVID was going on? Well, yeah, when the convoy came, yeah. 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 But thank you for correcting me. Um, nevertheless, uh, I in the meantime, I was working in an uh, old age home when I was closed the restaurant for a, whatever a period of time. And uh, I continued to work there. Uh, and so I were, because I had to pay the rent and I had to do what I had to do. So I was working from Monday to Friday at the cafe, $200 a day revenue, lots of money, right? And from that, you have to take a third of wages for the food. And then, you know, anyway, so I didn't have enough money. <laughs> so I had to go work in the old age home as a chef. And uh, because they didn't, they couldn't find cooks. They, they say that those old age homes were, were dangerous. They all, there's, there's, there's SARS, no, what is it called? Not SARS. Uh, the COVID there and all that. Well, I went there. There was nothing like that. Everybody was happy. Nobody was dying. I don't know where those lies come from again. And um, and then they came up with the vaccine. And I was very suspicious. And they asked the staff if they want to take the vaccine, they could have it, right? And, uh, 
I saw some of the staff taking the vaccine and uh, one cook had problems with his heart. He say he feel like a, a, a vibration, sometimes like something thick going through him. A uh, young lady, uh, she says, I'm sick. I can't, I don't know what's wrong with me. And uh, they gave, of course, the vaccine to the old people too. And, uh, and my wife says, watch out, they're going to die. And sure enough, nobody died when they were, you know, confined in the old age home. Nobody died. Nobody had problems. As soon as they gave the vaccine, they start to die off. One after another one. And from 130, they went down to 60. That's scary. Something is not right, guys. Something is not really right. Anyways, uh, then they they were uh, they were making us work with the visor and the mask and the glasses. Like, what is wrong with you guys? I need to breathe here, you know? And so I had enough and I left the old age home. And I continue with God's help to trying to bring some revenue into the cafe. And uh, we were uh, we we're not doing too good, not at all. Uh, because every time we were starting to pick a customer, have a nice relationship with the customer, this Trudeau government, because it's not a liberal government, it's a Trudeau government. We gotta stop saying liberal or conservative, or Trudeau, and I know you can hear me, Trudeau decided to do this and that and that. And uh, I know who's telling him what to do, but I don't think he's his IQ is that much. However, uh, the high, yeah. uh, every time we were starting to get six hundred to seven hundred dollars a month uh, a day revenue, um, they would they would shut down again. Uh, they would have a, a you know the gyms could not open, the saloons you know the hairdresser could not open. Uh, office had to be down to 15% or 30%. So I started again with this 50 to hundred dollars and tried to work my way up again. And it was like having wind in your cell and then the cell, will, uh, the wind disappeared and the cell falls down all the time. So I can tell you, I, I, in 2020, I opened up in August the fourth or the sixth and uh, we were starting to do good. And in, um, <clears throat> In uh, at Labor Days, they shut us. They shut us down. Oh, not, 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 oh, 2020. So not the cafe or the takeouts or whatever, but the offices around. And I get business from the offices. Mm. Okay. So then I put my 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 strength together. We bought tablets. No, you know tablets and did, uh, door uh, DoorDash, skip the dishes, Uber Eats, and we start to pick up. And then at Thanksgiving, they shut us down again. Same year, 2020. So, oh my God. So, I, again, we start to come up with ideas and whatever. And we start to sell and then they reopen a little bit and whatever. And by Christmas, I shut us down again. So, now we're going into 2021. And January, it was scary. There was nothing that the streets were empty. Everybody loved to work from home, of course. Can I blame him? They don't have to travel. They don't have to wake up that early. I don't know what they do, but. What Are you I'm still to... getting a lot of the Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes? No, not that much. Hmm. Not at all, actually. Because they had, uh, I don't I can't say because I really, I, I don't know. I, I'm not in their houses. Hmm. So January, February, March, April, May, June, and the end of July, the max I would do would be 290 to 350 a day. Then I decided to... Dollars or not, dollars, not, not people. <laughs> no. Dollars exactly, and you can't pay the rent. It's not good. So we used our speed. We used our saving. Yeah. Uh, we used uh, uh, some catering money that we put aside just in the emergency. I mean, I <laughs> I tried to survive, and the Lord was merciful because my landlord was patient, and I think they do believe in me that I, I'm the best in doing what I do. Uh, well, with his help, of course, you know, God. And um, and in, uh, uh, I went to New Brunswick to see my in-laws because we're getting old. And my wife wanted to see them. And so I say, I'm not going to lose much, so I might as well go there. So my son, my two sons, uh, future daughter-in-law, took over the cafe for, for a whole week. And for whatever reason, people start to come in. It was interesting. So when we came back, those three, four days of that week, 
plus the weekend, um, I took over again and we started to make, I think it was 600 to $700 a day again. I said, a little bit of a breather, right? So I paid some money of my rent out. And I, I had hope, I had hope again. And we started to increase. I did the catering for the conservative, which helped a lot. And the, and the, and the, um, when they were voting and the election, even though I don't think they were interested to win, because I think they know some of them are actually, I believe, sold out. Some of the conservative, anyways. But that's another story. I was disappointed. They were not, you know, fighting like they were just going with the flow. And, you know, there was not. A, they knew they were not going to win. That's that's my opinion. And uh, we were doing good, and guess what? Christmas, Christmas came, you know, from September to Christmas, and they shut us down again. And I reopened on January with the same, what is going to happen? I actually talked to my son that has me, the autistic one. I know, I think we're going to have to close down. And that's January this year now. This year. So I went for two weeks, not even two weeks. And... Uh, if my wife would be here, she would tell you I lost it. Like I was getting angry. How? Like you're pretty in debt at this point. Oh know? yeah, eighty-one thousand dollars. That's not. That's not a joke. I I have no money to to to. Yeah, I, a little bit, but it's, you need to buy food for the house or pay the mortgage, right? And every penny counts, right? And I'm not the only one. I, I'm not just wanting for myself. I'm wanting for everybody that lost or whatever. You know that this this. Trudeau government, not the liberal government, it's Trudeau government is causing all that crap and he doesn't care. His brother has the Bitcoin thing going, right? He advertised Trudeau, the Bitcoin thing, and he wants to block the bank accounts. I, I see a connection here. I'm sorry, but I, I'm not that stupid. I, 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 he says, there is no conspiracy. Well, <laughs> after this, I'm sorry, you just show everybody that there is a conspiracy. Now, nevertheless, two weeks into January, I lost it. I got really angry. I got angry at God. I said, come on, what are we here doing? You know, I know you want people with faith, but what the hell am I here for? And uh, I, one day at, uh, at the cafe, I took the mask and I threw it down. I said to everybody, sorry. I said to everybody, um, you don't need to have the mask. You can sit down because at that point you cannot sit down. I said, who cares? And then I study what the mandate is. Guess what? A mandate is not a law. A mandate is actually they ask you to do that freely without retribution, no money, you know, they, they, for free. And when I figured that out, I says, guess what? I'm not going to do that for you. You want to police that? You want to enforce it? You do it because I realize when we do it, we are the one that gets sued, not him. Trudeau. Yeah, that's what he mandates. That's what Ford mandates. So he doesn't get sued. We get sued. See, that's how it works, guys. Pay attention. And 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 um, so therefore, you know, I say to everybody, you can sit down, I don't care no more. And guess what? Even people from the government were eating in the cafe, sitting down without the mask. They were they they are they're they were they're, they're they are what they are, you know, they're all the people like us. And they want to enjoy sitting down and eat, not standing in the office and whatever, kneeling out with a desk or whatever. Go away from the office, have a break. And uh, a few days later, the combo was coming. And I, and I said, well, that's, uh, that's great. Somebody sees us like me, you know, I thought, but I didn't expect that, all these trucks and all that. And when they came, it was like a, a, a wind of fresh air because I could see faces. I could see interaction. I could see life. Oh, you're from Alberta. You're from Saskatchewan. You're from Texas. Like, wow. You know, like it was like, hey, we're alive again. You know, we almost forgot what we were. And Trudeau does not want that. It's just like the Obama government and the, and the, and the Clinton government. Oh, one village, you know. You, yeah, in the city. Blocked in and through walls. They don't want you to live. They don't want you to enjoy life. They want to control you. The reason? Is that greed? I don't know. You can find that by yourself, but I know what it is. Nevertheless, it's my opinion again. 
So these truckers came in and uh, I, my wife was watching the news one evening and I pay attention to what they were saying and they were saying that they invaded the Rideau Center. Not true. They were stealing uh, food from the, from the um, homeless. Not true because I drive every day through there. No, there was a few trucks there, but they, they didn't store nothing. And they took the, the sleeping area from the, when they have their own bunk, bunk bed in the, in behind the truck. I, I, something was not right. And then they smashed or they destroyed the businesses downtown. I didn't see not one. Not one. Being broken into or smashed or, 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 or invaded or mistreated. That's not true. It's all lies. And that, that is my story. I, I see over and over and over and over, and it doesn't change, repeating the same caca. I don't know if you understand caca. And it stinks. You know, if you're in a toilet and it stinks, you want to get out of there. You don't want to breathe that air. And if you guys don't, don't smell that by now, then take that mask down and try to, to, to smell it. Because you know how, how much nice it is without a mask? And you're not going to get sick, trust me. And if there is somebody that dies with COVID, it's because they received the shot. If you find out what's in that shot, you're gonna think twice before you take that. Do some homework. Don't let those fake doctors, fake scientists convince you. Go to the one that actually, take, like, you know, when you go to a doctor, to a mechanic and say, I wanna have a different opinion, do that. And then you find out. Like I said, I worked in the old age home and nobody was dying. Nobody was infected with COVID. Nobody, it was all made up. And then when they give the shots, that's when they start to die. Especially the old people. So the, the media, is it called mainstream media? CBC, CTTV, and whatever. I'm ashamed of them. There's no journalistic uh, job. They're just reading from the prompter. They're showing a few images from the past and from the few, from what has happened and mixing it together. As I remember, I have a very good memory. I see those footages before. So, you know, you're doing a very poor job. Whoever is teaching you, you're doing a very poor, poor job to give fake news. Uh, there was another thing they say that uh, they, were, uh, they were violent or they were having ammunition and all that. Uh, before you talk, find some proofs. And a table with some vest, machine guns, a few guns, and a few grenades doesn't prove a damn thing. Okay? Um, the people of the convoy, that means the trucker and the protester, behaved exemplary. That is my story, and I tell I was down there in the center of the the the, 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 the ice storm, the storm of the eye. And the first week, the police was supposed to get uh, the truckers away with provoking them, and it didn't work. Why? Because they're peaceful. Second week, we got OPP and RCMP. They did the same thing provoke, try to, to instigate and whatever, nothing happened. Why? They were peaceful. Very peaceful. Matter of fact, 70% are Christian, born again Christian. So what do you expect? To them to come out with a machine gun? Come on, give me a break. So it didn't work. Actually, what really irritated me, I don't call it Mr. What really irritated Trudeau is that there were so many Christians coming in his lawn in the parliament, it's not his lawn, by the way, it's Canada's lawn, not his. And praying right in front of the parliament and ask God to get him out of there. And he couldn't take it no more. So whatever happened, happened. So he started to enforce. And the chief of police of Ottawa, I don't know, I guess he had enough. I don't know, I, I'm not, I, I can't say how, I cannot see or say what was going on in his heart, but a lot of Christians prayed for him. They didn't condemn, we understand you have to do a job. We'll pray for you that you have a change of heart. 
What happened? Even the half of the police force didn't call in for work. They call in sick, apparently. That's what I heard. But some of them quit too. Some of them were crying. So they got in uh, just a second. It's my phone. I'll let it run. Let it run the phone. <laughs> so I would answer. Probably wait to continue talking though, because it's pretty loud. You want to stop it for a second? No, no, it's okay. Done. It's like an alarm. Phone call. No, just hold on a second. <laughs> just a second. Oh. Okay, it's over. <laughs> just to make sure that who that is. Mm -hmm. Rich. And and just so people don't know, I might dissolve or let that play out if you're okay with this. No, so that's okay. You can let it play. Yeah, but no, we didn't plan this, right? Yeah. We just we just happened to happen. <laughs> So Trudeau could not stand that a lot of Christians were praying in that Canadian law, the parliament law. It doesn't belong to him. It doesn't belong to his father. It doesn't belong to any prime minister. It belongs to Canada, to the Canadians. That's where we come and protest. That's our place to gather when we are not, we are discontent. We have a problem. We have an issue. And, um, what this protester wanted was just to have a conversation. Hey, we are actually somebody. We, we have an issue here. Can we explain? They even got invited to come down with their doctors to, to explain and prove to us about this COVID. They have not one document that proves that they actually sterilized the virus and isolated it in order to make a vaccine out of it. They don't have one document. That's what you need to do before you do a vaccine. I told you my IQ is a bit higher, right? So that's why they couldn't talk. That, because they would have been put a shame. One, because Theresa Tan is not a pathologist or a virologist. She's nothing. She's nothing. And she has a problem. Come to me and talk to me. I remember you when you, when you came in the kitchen. <laughs> Whatever. And... Um, and way back when she came in your kit, your uh, 2004 or five, just before the, 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 At the, the same restaurant. No, it was a, it was a ski hill. Mansourish Moonstone. Matter of fact, my general manager said to her, you just came off the coconut tree. And now you're telling us how to, to, uh, to be clean because she couldn't speak English almost. And she has not learned yet how to speak proper English like me, right? <laughs> We come from a different country. So not to put her down, but, you know, you should repent too. Because you know where liar go? Not, not to the university, but to hell. So I would repent. I don't want to be in the judgment of God if I would be you. And nevertheless, we're gonna, I'm not going to get sidetracked. And I got to stop being in the, the, the lake. So um, when the police, um, how do you say, of Ottawa, didn't, uh, you know, the police chief quit. We got this other guy, Bell guy. He acts really funny. If you pay attention how he behaves, he moves or whatever, there's something wrong with the guy. And I don't think he's a police officer. He looks more like an army guy. Nevertheless, you know, he can be whoever he wants to be. Uh, but he seemed to have taken over, called in these thugs, rent a cop. Uh, that uh, they think they can break the law. They think they can walk all over the people. They, they have an issue mentally. I think they have a, a, a mental issue because they can only deal with aggression. They can deal with, uh, what do you call it, uh, authority, not with proper speech. I mean, there's going to be a few that are, are more common, but the majority have a little issue I like that lady screaming to my wife and to me and between the window and all her brisade or the arab guy i call him arab because he looked like middle east guy uh he was acting as a a bylaw officer whatever you know <laughs> and they don't work in silence on that. anyways and um they the the the, the this bell guy he, with uh, the authorization of 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 uh, what's his name Trudeau, 
executed a cleanup of the streets, but he didn't have the permission from the Senate or the legislation. He didn't have no permission. He just decided to do it because apparently he thinks he can dictate. Uh, in order to do that, in my opinion and in my understanding, you have to have a crisis and there was no crisis. Why? Because the people were peaceful, right? Were they, were they, no, they were singing, praying, uh, sharing, cooking. They, they might have left a little bit of a mess, but they were cleaning up every day. Every day there was people going around, make sure that it was cleaned up. The city people don't came to clean up. The, all of a, the only people that came to pick up the garbage with the trucks that they were in the container and put by the truckers, were the people with the, the, the they take away the garbage, you know, the recycling, the, the, the paper, the, the cardboards, and the garbage. They are the only people who were working. And they had no problem coming to those places. There was no blocked route. Whoever was blocking the road was the police, the OPP. They, let's see, there's four lanes to go home. It turns into one and create, cr created a chaos. And why they did that? To make sure that no more trucks come in? Maybe. But I think it was to get people from Wada fed up and get angry at the, at the trucker. But guess what? It didn't work. Matter of fact, they went home, turned around, and then went out to protest. Again, a peaceful protest. But as I said before, this bell guy came in. They, in two days, they tried to clean up. And uh, you saw on TV how they tried to clean up. They arrested every boy that was walking around. No authority again. But who came with violence was them. And it was all peaceful. And why they came with violence? Because they wanted to provoke. So they tried to provoke with those thugs. They was provoking with, um, with uh, the army. There was a few army people and those rent a cop. And guess what? It didn't work. They got arrested. They didn't, hey, you can arrest me. It was all peaceful. So when we see that, how the tracker and the protesters behave, right? You, you see that they were exemplary. For three weeks, it went perfectly right. There was no aggression. There was no confrontation. There was not throwing of stuff like in other countries. Canada, I am so proud, man. I'm so proud. Canada protesters were the most people I ever seen in my life. I can look at TV shows and whatever. I never saw anything more protestful. Uh, so perfectly done. Like the Canadian. I'm proud of all you guys that did that. But I'm ashamed of Trudeau. I'm ashamed of the, this guy, the bell guy, the police officer. I'm ashamed of the rent, rental cop. I'm ashamed of these army guys in the RCMP and the OPP, you don't call yourself law. How can I say that? I think you gotta, you gotta go to a doctor and get tested because, or, or evaluated because you have issues, big issues. If you cannot be a bully, you cannot be a man, but a man is who is meek, who is peaceful. This, this being a, Tough is not making you a man, actually. It shows you how weak you are. And you, Trudeau, and all these people I talked about, the police and all that, enforce, the enforcer, you show the whole world how naked you are. You show the whole world how bad you are. You show the whole world that you are the violent people. You are the one that want to enforce the one world system through the UN. You showed the whole world that you work for Bill Gates and Zucker and the Pope and all these greedy individuals. And, you know, we won. Did not Jesus won on the cross by dying, by sacrificing himself and be peaceful and not reacting? Did he not won like that? And we did the same thing because we are the children of God. But you lost. You just exactly acted like those Jewish leaders, the Roman Empire, and you wanted to crucify the truckers, the protesters, and those who stand up for their right, just like me. You lost big time. Now, to the Senate, 
Why did you not vote anyhow? You dis- you didn't do the vote after you hear that oh the 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 emergency act is over. You should have voted anyway. He, I think you're sold out too. And if you're not, prove it to us. Can you prove that to us? Honestly, can you prove it to us? Then? Because now nobody trusts you. Nobody. Nobody trusts a police officer now. A police officer no more. Nobody trusts a, a doctor, a virologist, a epid- epidemiology, whatever you call it, a prime minister, or a or a or a premier of uh, of, uh, of of uh, you know Alberta, what you call it, British Columbia. Even if, nobody's going to trust you no more. You did really good. You worked for the devil, and now you are the guilty one. Everybody's looking at you, and they're not impressed. They're not impressed. So this is my story, living in the eye of the storm. That's what I saw. Now I know why God made me buy that cafe, so I can speak to them. Now I know why I mean I had to buy a house where I didn't like it, because it's the most safe house I can have. And I can see over look through the parliament. I can see the parliament from my, from my window. And guess what? I pray for them. That may God help them. But I have a hard time believing they will turn around. To all who worry about me and my family, at the moment we are safe. We still have to pay the rent. <laughs> I made a lot of friends. I love Canada. It's my home. And don't let it take it away from this guy that's not even Canadian, in my opinion. He should go back to Cuba. And to all, bye-bye. One question for you, man. Okay. We go. And uh, that's what do you see for the, the transition from here? Oh, that could be very complicated. I, I was trying to explain, Travis, that... Uh, <clears throat> that I, I because I, I was dead before, I don't belong to myself, I belong to God. And I was also explaining to him that the more you humble, the more he raises you up. And a lot of people maybe don't understand what God means with raising up, but he gives you gifts. So if you humble yourself, you say, I have no capacity, he will give you the capacity. And then if you can handle the capacity, the gifts, and you don't become proud, then he puts you in the positions. And uh, in my example, he used me to put in the eye of the storm with the cafe, but also in understanding the Bible. There's no turning back. We're on the home stretch. How long it takes? Mm, not too long from this point on. But it's not too long. Uh, not too long. All I can say is not too long. They will, don't trust them. They will never give away what they worked so hard till now. They thought that was their window of opportunity to execute the control of all the world, to change your DNA. You know what I mean with that? That shot changes your DNA. Do you know what is in your DNA? There's four letters. Or they, 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 the scientist um, put them a name, a letter. And those letters are the same, it's an alphabet. It's like an alphabet with four letters on it. And you put it in a sequence. And apparently, they could not yet break the code of the DNA. But they did the first verse. It says, God in man eternal. And the four letters, because they're always repeating each other, they are the four letters of God, Yahweh. Without the age, without the Yahweh. So who else wants to take away God inside the man but Satan? Now you know who's working for Satan, your own prime minister that you elected. It's a shame, isn't it? But we didn't know that. We got deceived. From this point on, they worked for many years to achieve this point. They're not going to give it up. They will not give it up. So prepare. Strap up your boot pants. Uh, like what do you call it? Boot strap. Uh, strap your pants. It's going to get only worse. Even Carl Schwab says, 
oh, everybody thinks it's going to be going back to where the way it was. And no, it's going to be all different because they set for that. God allowed evil to increase in order for us to repent. Now, I don't point the fingers, but there's people that don't know about God. Well, that's their chance to know God. There is people that believe in God, but they never open up the Bible. Well, that's now that your time because God gives you the opportunity. And then there's people like me that will get a little lazy, even though they know everything. Not everything, you know what I mean. And we woke up and uh, we, are the, we are supposed to be the people that he made us to be. So this is our window opportunity to show God that we belong to him or to the other guy. Not, not Trudeau, Satan. So it's up to you. I have, um, I have a prayer. I'm going to give it to Travis and he's going to put it up for you guys. I, I didn't know why I wrote down that prayer. I, to, I had the prayer. My wife wrote it down as I was praying. And uh, what do I need that for? Now I know why. I want to give it to Travis, and Travis will somehow put it up on a video later on. And uh, it teaches whoever does not know how to humble themselves to God and how to, to commit themselves unto God so that he can intervene. And remember, there's no turning back. We're on the end stretch. You know, they're going to say, where is your God? Where is your, you know... Where, where is the millennium? The, where is the, the, the we, are, we, are, we are evolved and all that? Well, the DNA proves that we are not evolved. Because in order to have those, it, it's a little hard to explain it because it's, 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 but those letters, they're supposed to be proteins and minerals before in order to create life. And if they're not here, they cannot, they can, life cannot be created. So we are actually, like the Bible says, we called into existence. And the signature is the DNA. And uh, it says in the end time, when you see the one who's not supposed, the abomination of desolation, be in the place you're not supposed to be, then you know. And his number is 666, right? Now, there was uh, 2,000 years ago, there were, the Roman Empire was in the holy mountain across Jerusalem. And the Christian fled because they said those who are in Judea flee, right? Judea is in Jerusalem. Flee because there are going to be a time such as it was never before. And there was a siege of 10 years and they destroyed, they burned to the ground. Jerusalem, but those who fled, they were safe. And that was the physical part. Now we got the spiritual part. Where do you think is the holy place now? In your DNA. And what is Trudeau trying to do? He doesn't even know that. He just wants the money, right? But Satan, Satan through Trudeau and other governments, leaders, is trying to go in the place he's not supposed to be with that DNA, spike protein, to change your DNA, not belonging to God. God in man eternal. So it's up to you, your choice. It's the end. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm sorry I cannot speak that very good English. As I have other languages that bounce into me. When you speak more languages, they, they confuse your head a little bit. But nevertheless, you can research all that. There's a lot of pastors out there that know that. You know, uh, Hildebrand, Pastor Hildebrand, the Mennonite, and I'm not Mennonite again, he had a good sermon last Sunday, and apparently they closed down his church. That shows you how good they are, this government. <laughs> they don't like to hear the truth and observe the leaders. They're not normal. There's something wrong with them. They're acting like weird. You remember Hillary Clinton? Remember the German counselor? They were shaking and wiggling. And unless they're on crack or cocaine, they're demons. I'm sorry. 
because only people with they are taking those drugs are acting like that. And if they aren't taking their drugs, they're demonized. And you know, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm not fanatic. I know what I see. I'm not 50 years old. I'm not 40 years old. I'm 60 years old and I have a memory like iron. I can see a lot. By the way, before I conclude, they always talk about this climate change. It never changed. I'm 60 years old this year in March. Weather never changed. It goes up and down. Some people are cold, some people are warm. Don't believe what they say that science tells us. So science cannot talk. And if you look at science properly and not let it interpret by those you trust, you look at yourself, you'll see that the temperature never changed. Sometimes the glaciers melt and sometimes they refreeze. Sometimes the North Pole cap melts a bit faster, and sometimes it refreezes again. They're lying. They're lying out of their freaking. It's sad. And they say if it melts, it would rise the sea ocean. That's science. They're science. It didn't rose, right? And how much it melted? See, just pay attention to what they say. You catch them in their lies. And why do they say that? Because they don't want cars to be. With a fuel with gasoline, they want it with electricity. And once you have electricity, you can control everybody and anything. Everybody. That is the problem. And uh, they need lithium, remember that. Now you want to put gasoline in the water of the Indian reserves. Now you know why they try to get all the Arab people out of the Middle East. Pay attention what they're doing. Open your eyes. Russia wants to go in the Middle East. America wants to go in the Middle East. The Chinese wanted to go in the Middle East. What's there under the ground? I don't know. But if you see the smoke, there is a fire. Pay attention. You know, it's so simple. Don't trust what they see. They, they're lying. They're lying. They lied from the beginning. They were testifying against Jesus that he said that he was, you know, <laughs> whatever they said, and uh, and and uh, that he's the king and not Caesar, right? They lie, they lie, and then they crucify. And now they want to crucify those who tell the truth, which are the children of Jesus. It's up to you guys. But it's it's enough for now. <laughs> Goodbye, love you all, and uh, we thank Travis that he was willing to come and and do an interview. But remember, the prayer comes up. Just to help, because that's how God wants to come. Okay? Have a good night. So, so uh, we, were, we were just packing in, and then uh, we were talking, Travis and I was together, and then uh, he asked me if I wanted to say that because I was sharing with him. Uh, and I say, uh, well, let's try. Yeah, why not? Okay. So I know it's, it's a lot of info, and it's not explained the best by me. And maybe that's God's will, so that I'm not eloquent in speech. And so you're gonna, going to be curious and want to find out where, if, where I say, I say it's true or not. I'm not, I don't belong to any denomination. I don't belong to any club. I don't belong to, to any sect, whatever you want to call it. I'm Jewish background. Uh, my mother's side is Ashkenazi, both. Uh, my father's side is half Ashkenazi, Sephardine, the other. I'm a Levite, I'm a Cohen. And for me, maybe it's easy to understand the Bible because it's in my DNA. Every individual is, is, is different than another. And the Levites have a different DNA and it's more pure. Uh, I wouldn't say pure, but uh, I say elevated for a specific reason that is we are supposed to teach. But my language is my barrier. Nevertheless, as I said before, I don't belong to, to any pastor, congregation, anything, even though I went to certain ones in the past. But I never accepted the membership. Because I belong specifically to God. Like I said before, I died a few times, but somebody was keeping me alive, bringing me back. And I understood that 
it's not me, but Christ in me living. And my, my time didn't, was not come yet. And uh, But I noticed that certain Mennonites have the truth and they know what's going on. But not as much as the Seven Days Adventist. Now, I didn't go to school in the Seven Days Adventist. I'm not part of the Seven Days Adventist. I don't have membership to the Seven Days. I have no attachment to them. But I have a very open mind. I listen to everybody and then I let the, the spirit discern, the spirit of God. And, you know, they made fun of the Seven Days Adventist. They, uh, they ridiculized them because they said that the Lord was coming and not. Uh, I'm going to correct you guys. I study history. I'm from Europe. But they were Baptist. Well, it was in the United States that it happened. But they were actually Baptist. They said that the Lord was coming. They were not Seven Days Adventist. And some of those left the word Baptist. They decided to study the word better. And then they got the revelation. What really was supposed to happen after that point. And uh, because they were so eager, you know, they start to study the Bible properly. And you know, Kellogg's? And all those rice crispy and all those healthy foods, because they're healthy foods without the sugar, right? They come from the Seven Days Adventist. You know, the healthy diets, the organic stuff, it's not for the scientists. They eat that. It's again from Seven Days Adventist because we say you're supposed to eat vegetables, you're supposed to eat grains, you're supposed to eat nuts, you're supposed to eat fruits. That is what makes us healthy. And, but they, they, they went farther. They went to study the book of Revelation. And um, some of them get carried away. Some of them, they put their input, whatever. But they're close. They're very close. And I, I heard one time uh, this guy, Walter Vith. I love the guy. Because he says the same thing that God told me. And he doesn't take credit. He's humble. But he's a scientist, as you're going to call it. He's a, he's, a, he's a professor. He's a zoologist or whatever. He can't tell you more than I can tell you. And if you Google Walter Witt, you don't have to go into the, the Seven Days Adventist, but he will explain a lot of things to you guys. A lot of things. He had to learn too. And he was, he was a Catholic before that. But when he, and he was open-minded. And he was believing in evolution. But something bugged them. And then one day they start to decide to, to figure things out. And he didn't become a seven days Adventist because he wanted to learn. He could study himself. He could read the Bible himself. He didn't need to be taught how to do that. But he joined the seven days Adventist because they were the closest to what he understood it was. Because we cannot be, like he says, dogmatic because you know everything in detail. But I suggest, if you didn't understand what I said, pay attention to what he says. The other pastors, mm, you know, they always get carried away and they put their own opinion in it. But I think that Walter V does not put his opinion in it. That's what I like about it. And when he does, he says, that's my opinion. So the most honest person I've ever seen, Walter V. V. A. I T H H. He's probably 80 years old or whatever, but he looks young, very young. It's amazing. And uh, yeah, he can teach you a lot if you pay attention. But the Holy Spirit is the one that reveals to you. So Travis said that was maybe important to say. <laughs> so sorry if it was another thing. <laughs> I hope uh, that will help you. And God bless you all, really. God bless you all.